Okay, so now that we have our simulation working, let's talk a little bit about those guys. Stiffness, we already know, is James Modulus. Damping ratio is trying to stop the inertia and velocity of the jiggling, really. So if I put like a lower value, you will see that this is much jiggling. There and if I put a higher value, I'll set that. Oh, the other way around. Sorry, this will be much more jiggly, and the lower the the number, the less jiggly you will have. Okay, and resonance scale is really um, the length of its edge at the beginning of the simulation that the simulation will try to go to go to. So if I put a lower value, you will see that the, our muscle shrinks at the beginning, just at the first frame, because it's trying to get half the length of the initial uh, geometry on its edge. If I put something bigger, you will see that it will expand because it's trying to maintain 1.5 times the edge length of its edge in the simulation. So this is really what's happening when you do um, the excitation and line of action thing in Ziva. You're they are changing these values to uh, emulate when the muscle is full of blood. So when it's full of blood, the red length scale will be maybe a little bigger uh, because it's uh, much bigger the, because it's full of blood. And also the stiffness is much higher and maybe the damping, the damping ratio is a little bit higher also because the jiggle should be much, much faster. So how to do that? Because right now these values uh, cannot be animated. You, you, if you put some, some animation here and you change the value, uh, the solver won't work and won't, won't pay any, any attention to that because this is just initial values. If you want to do some animation and change these values uh, during the simulation, you have to go inside the solver. And one thing important to know is that that um, change entering here you can just do that with the Houdini FX license. The Houdini core cannot do that. But there's a workaround on that. You can just do the setup in an FX um, license and then do your, all your shot work in a, in a core license. And that's the only thing that we will use from FX, really, Houdini FX license. So everything else can be done just with the core license. So let's create here inside the solver a uh, properties and let's do some really animation, really simple animation, maybe there was length, which is the easiest to see. So maybe we can go there and do here some animation and just put it right here and put it half uh, a scan, just alt click and I am doing keyframes right there. So now you will see that it will shrink, as you can see, during the simulation. Great. That's a little bit what happens when we use line of actions, but for sure we need to do some line of actions there. So let's try and make some line of actions. Let's create a blast mode. Really easy, really fast. And I will select just a couple of points, maybe this guy and this guy. Invert the selection. So I have two points. I don't know if you can see there are two points right there. We can use an add node to create a line between those points. Just like that, just like in my group. And it tries to get the points that we have and do a line with them. So right now I have a line and as you can see, is already following my skeleton. You can see right there, this is the skeleton. This is my line and you can see we have already a line of action. Great. So what we need to do is to measure this line of action. We can just do a measure Note, use the length of that. It will create an attribute called perimeter that we can just see right here. For seeing these um, attributes, this is the key to hide uh, or show the attributes. And also you can just right click and hit here on the pencil and change how you want to see them. Maybe you will use a color, maybe you can use the marker, which is the text sometimes doesn't work. You just click it and click and that's it. And you can also change maybe the font size to get a really huge number right there. And maybe another color to be able to read it easier. So 
Right now, this is my length, and as you can see, it changes as it moves. Great. So, this is exactly how the line of action in Ziva works. It's just measuring the, the line of action and just giving some information to the muscle to do some stuff. So, we can just grab this attribute right here and do a remark. You have done some rigging or some uh, look that in in Maya, you know, the remap, remapping attributes is a thing that we do a lot. So maybe we can just start by computing the range of the attribute. I have to say which attribute I want, which is a primitive attribute right now. And that's a perimeter. And that's the range that we have right now. So let's say that this is the input um, max and the input mean, let's say it's a little bit lower, and we will remap it to maybe 1 and 0 0.8. The other way around, 0 0.8 1. So now when it shrinks, I have this number, which will be my wrestling scale, and we will be doing the muscle a little bit smaller, in this case, than it is when it's not um, excited, when the forearm is not bent, so the bicep is not working. So let's do a little bit higher number here, something like that, even something like that. So it's one and then it goes to zero. I think it's too much, but that way we will see what happens. And we can create a new attribute that we will call res for length, just to be Easy with that. Okay, we can do another one. And this time I want to create a speed attribute, and that will be like 1 and 100, maybe. Let's show this stiff attribute. As you can see right now, our stiff attribute is showing as a color, so we will come here and make it show as a marker, and again, large, maybe just like that. This is going the other way around, so it's like that. And the stiffness will go up 23 times because we will be multiplying it and uh, what it is uh, in the default. Let's do something like that, so it's really noticeable. Uh, so it will be really, really stiff when the muscle is excited, is contracted, is full of blood. Great. There's a thing that we have to do right now because, as you can see, we have uh, this is a primitive attribute, so it's going with the primitives, not the points. But the best thing to do right now is to convert that to a detailed attribute. The difference is that points attribute saves data. It can be a string, it, it can be a a float, it can be a vector, it can be whatever it is, um, in, in, every, in every point, same thing with primitives, in every primitive, and detail just save it one time, so it's just one for all the object, and that's what we want because it's much, much easier to control and to, and to save, because we don't have to save that much uh, numbers, really, that much data. So we have these attribute promotes here, and we will change the primitive attributes called rest length and stiff, and we will change it to a detail attribute. So now they are detail attributes. So the detail attribute is just one float. You can see here FLT for float, one number uh, for all the object. Same thing with the stiff. Not for all the primitives, not for all the points, just one number. In this case, it's just a line, so it's a, just two points, but you know, it's a double. It's really the double, double the, the, the data that, that we use. Okay, let's create here an all and let's call it out line of action for the biceps. Great. I will hit Control C just to go here and do a Control B. So this wrestling scale shouldn't be an uh, animation anymore. But we will do an expression getting the detail attribute that we need. So it's detail, open parenthesis, and you can see Houdini is really smart in that. 
and he tells you how to use every one of the questions with this. So the surface node is our node, the attribute name, and the index is the index of the um, attribute value that we want. In this case, it's zero because we just got one float. So we can do exactly that. I hit Control Z on the on the node, so I can do Control V right there, and I can just put rest land, which is the name of our attribute, at zero, and that's pretty much it. So we can see that now. Let's just. You can see it's working. I just um, disabled the simulation right there. You can see it's working, and now it's changing our rest land scale using that attribute that we did on the timeline. So that's great. And let's copy that and paste it just right here and change press length for if we have it just right here. And you can see that the stiffness goes from one to half. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that you're overriding the stiffness that we that you had. So usually your stiffness is one uh, times one thousand. So we will have to change that. So now it's times one thousand. And when we get the muscle excitation, it will be a hundred times more, two hundred times more. So let's try and do that and do our simulation right there. The simulation on. Let's put it on, and you will see that it will change a little bit. It's barely noticeable because there's no, there's absolutely no changes at all. But we can try and do a lot more frames. I don't remember how long this simulation is, but it's fairly long. So. Doing that, we can create a line of action, as you can see right here, and connect it, connect the line, this line of action to our muscle. So we will have the excitation right there. And that's a really, really nice thing to do. There's a lot of things to talk about that. And I will talk about that in, in another video where I will show you the way I do it. This is just like a starting point to, to get used to the nodes and, 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 and the workflow. But uh, it's not at all how that should be done, really. Maybe we'll see some variation right there. I don't know. Well, you can see some ex excitation there, not that much. But yeah, it's moving, it's working, everything's fine. And we can even do something crazy like um, Let's get this major attribute and I will do another remap just for the sake of um, visualization. So let's get this guy and this guy will be like that, I guess. So let's see this one. It, it will be excitation just to get something visually there. And let's show as a marker. So now it's zero, now it's one. Great. We'll have to change this guy. So now we have some excitation right there, not that much. Something like that. Okay. So now what I can do is just grab this guy, control C again, and we can do color. And we can do, uh, oh, I think we can, yeah, we can do nothing to promote here. And again, promote this to the detail attribute. And I will do copy attribute. I will explain this node because it's really, really powerful. So I will copy this attribute to this um, object right here, and the attribute to copy will be excitation. Great. 
So now we have to tell them it that it's ah, I cannot do it like this. Okay. Let's do primitive and primitive attribute. Okay. So now I have excitation right there. And I can show it as a color. So now you can see it's getting whiter when it's excited. So it's really, really nice. We can do something like apply a color to it and make a, a run from an attribute. Use excitation. I think that they cannot be. I don't remember that. this guy yeah that's it so now we can see the excitation in a really really great way so you can see when the muscle is, ex is excited and when not great just to show that we can do a lot of stuff here just to do some visualizations of things right now this line of action is not the best it can be you can do a lot of stuff with that and you can you can do it much much better than that but it's just um, an example to show how you can do all of these things here so that's it for this video we will do another one i guess that we will go to the fascia and skin and all that stuff and then we will we will try to show a nice workflow to use all of that in, in a full body muscle simulation great see you in the next one